Okay, so we are um, we're starting uh, something new today. Um, for those watching at home, I'm, I don't know how this ball's going to... It's the, sh the world's shiniest board, but anyway, I hope you can see what we're going to do. Uh, the thing we're covering is something called, rather pompously, you need to grab a whiteboard pen and rubber, really, the, uh, the modulus function. Um, sounds pompous, it's not, it's really, really simple. So, on your whiteboards, just uh, knock me up a set of axes, and on that set of axes, can you just sketch for me... Um, that straight line. Okay, so I'm hoping you can look at that and you can say straight away, I know what that line's gonna look like, roughly. Okay, so I'm hoping you've drawn me a line that goes through minus five on the y-axis and is quite steep. Okay, so it's, uh, its gradient is three and it goes through minus five on the axis. Can I now get you to uh, work out that coordinate for me? So work out where it, it's obvious where it crosses the y-axis, but where does it cross the x-axis? Remember what's true at everywhere along the x-axis. So that's a root, it's where the graph crosses the x-axis is where y equals zero. So we make y equal to zero, solve the equation and we get that point. So for that line, those are our two key axis intersections. Uh, I always say this is, you know, this is the first post-it note that I'd stick on my bedroom mirror or the first flashcard that I make. Graph crosses the y-axis when x is zero. So in that rule, if I make x equal to zero, y is minus five. Graph crosses the x-axis when y is zero. So if I make y equal to zero in that, I get x is five thirds. So we have met lots of things that we can do in rules like this. So we have, for example, that function which means take the square root of whatever's underneath it. Uh, and we have that function, which squares whatever it is we're talking about. And we've met this function, which asks what power of 10 is this, the logging it. The modulus function is another thing that we can do to rules like this. And it looks like that. So those two bars either side of my rule are telling me that we need to apply the modulus function. Now I'll tell you what that does in just a moment but there is a potential for confusion here because we've met those two bars before. Those two bars also quite separately are the way we describe the length of a vector. So if you've got a vector like that that means what's the length of that vector, and we do it by saying, right, that vector's going along four and up three, so its length is Pythagoras, we get five. Um, so this is different to that, you know. And now, you know, why historically the same notation has been used for two quite different things, I don't know. I don't know. I suppose there's only so many different sort of funny little bits of notation you can use. But... Don't get confused with vectors, it means something quite different. So what does it mean? What does the modulus function do to 3x minus 5? All it means is ignore whether or not it is positive or negative. This modulus function says I just want the absolute value only. By that I mean if it comes out at minus 3, it's 3. If it comes out at minus 7, 
it's 7. If it comes out at 14, it's still 14. So we're not changing the sign, we're saying ignore the sign and just take the absolute value only. So these bars here mean take the absolute value of what you get. We ignore if it's negative, so we ignore the sign. And that can be used in algebra here on its own, not in the context of graphs. But in the context of a graph, what effect is it going to have on the graph that we've already drawn? If we're saying the y value is just the absolute value of 3x minus 5, we ignore whether it's positive or negative. Arthur, what effect is it going to have on the graph? Yeah, yeah. What we're saying is y can no longer be negative, because this symbol means ignore whether it's positive or negative, just take the, the number bit, the absolute value of it. So what we get is a bouncing graph. Everywhere until 5 thirds, as this graph comes down here, we're all OK, y is positive. But what we get when we get to here is rather than y becoming negative, it's going to bounce. And instead of going down to minus 5, it's going to go up to 5. So I've left that dotted line in there, not because it's there now, but just to remind me how I know that this part of the graph looks like that. But yes, graphs, graphs of functions which involve a modulus symbol, a modulus function, are always going to be bouncy. They're always going to bounce when they hit the x-axis. You're never going to get anything below the x-axis when you're dealing with a function that looks like that. OK. So have a go at a separate one then. Firstly, have a go at sketching that quadratic. Now, I've left it in factorised form, but of course we can multiply it out, can't we? So, and we know it's a happy quadratic. Have a go at sketching that quadratic. You're thinking about what the roots are, where it crosses the x-axis, what you get when y is zero. That's, that's probably the, the key thing here. So I'm hoping you've realised that what we've got here is a quadratic with roots at x is 0 and x is 3. When it's in this form, when x is 0, y will be 0, so it's going to look like that. Wait, I'm not fussed at the moment about where the turning point is. I could work it out. I know it's going to be when x is 1 and a half, because it's always halfway between the two roots. Or I could differentiate and ask when does the gradient equal zero, so, but I'm not fast. What I want us down to do is to sketch what that looks like. So go on, have a go. See if you can modify your sketch. Now I've added the modulus function to that graph. Well done, if you bounced it, okay? So it looks normal here and normal here, but here it's just a reflection of the x-axis because it's never going to go below 
the x-axis. Y is never going to be negative. Okay. Think about that one. That's a little bit more complicated. It might be helpful, and this is yeah, one of the reasons I think the whiteboard's probably... It might be helpful if you think about that first. I'm certainly going to start by sketching that, and then I'm going to think about what the minus 2... And notice the minus 2 is outside of the modulus sign. The <laughs> minus 2 is outside of the modulus sign. Can I again get you to work out the key coordinates? So this one, I'm particularly interested to know where it crosses the y-axis and where it bounces. So I, I've sketched 2x bar plus 1 with a modulus, so the one we're actually after, you've got to think what effect is taking away 2 we're going to have. And that takeaway 2 is outside the modulus. Outside the modulus. So Taking away 2 from the whole function will bring the whole function down. All right, That's different to replacing x with x minus 2, which moves it that way. Taking away 2 from the whole function moves the whole function down. So this is what it looked like before the takeaway 2. So now it's going to look like that. And that point there, which was minus a half 0, will now be minus a half, minus two. Didn't you just tell me that these graphs never go below the y-axis? Well, this graph doesn't, but if you subtract two, then it does pull it down below the y-axis. So that was 2x plus one. 2x plus one minus two will look like that. Okay, um, let's take a step back to something a little bit more straightforward. So, um, can you sketch that for me, showing me where it crosses the x and the y axis? So, a bit, a bit more straightforward again. The x-axis intersection is the fiddlier one. The y-axis intersection is nice and easy.
Um, the, the dotted line is very much not part of the graph. I, so really, if the question in an exam said, draw this, then I wouldn't leave that there. But I'm, I'm just showing myself, really, reminding myself how I've got here. That was 2x minus 3. And then the actual solid line is the modulus of 2x minus 3. Now, so this, this part of the line here is standard, good old vanilla, y equals 2x minus 3. The bounced part of the line, if you held a gun to my head and said, what's the equation of that line? Well, that line, this bit here, goes through 3, and it's as steep as the original line, but it's downhill rather than uphill. So I'm hoping you can see that that line would have the equation minus 2x plus 3. So the graph of the modulus of 2x minus 3 has two parts to it. It has a 2x minus 3 part and it has a minus 2x plus 3 part. Hopefully you can see the relationship there. Just been multiplied by minus 1. And when does it switch from one to the other? Well, it switches at this point here, that crucial x-axis intersection, which we get by working out when y is 0. OK. Now, if we went to a rubbish school, we would be stuck doing this manually. But of course, we've got a calculator that will do this for us. So let's just make sure we know how to plot this uh, graph. So if you turn on your calculator and get it into graph mode, does anyone want to borrow one? OK, uh, so with, without a visualiser, I'm uh, at a slight disadvantage, but you get yourself into graph mode, so it's waiting for you to type in the rule. And you don't need to type in y equals, because that's sort of there already. So what you need to do to get the modulus signs is you need to press the OPTN button, which stands for option, and that's one of the buttons um, sort of just below the function keys and when you so it's next to the shift button and then when you press that one of the options that appears along the bottom is numeric if it's not you might have to press the right arrow key to get to the second page but um, it should say numeric is one of those and this calculator refers to what we're doing today as the absolute value. So you should find ABS abs is it's nothing to do with uh, press, uh, sit ups, it's, um, it's absolute value. And if you hit that button, you should find you get your little bars appear. And at that point, you can then just type in your 2x minus 3 um, in the. Uh, so just, just see if you can get that to work. Now, you know my favourite button on the calculator uh, is the G-Solve button, because once you've got the graph on the screen, the G-Solve button will tell you um, a lot of information. And, I mean, hopefully, you don't need the G-Solve button to tell you the y-intercept, because that's really obvious. But, you know, this is a little bit fiddly. I mean, it's not impossible. Hopefully, you're capable of doing that. But you might want to check. Choosing root... Well, certainly when I tried it on my calculator, choosing, pressing G-Solve and choosing <coughs> root didn't work. Um, it said um, no, no value. So I, I, I clearly there's something about the way it's working out the modulus which get, it gets upset about. So I got that point by choosing min. So I hit the G-Solve button and then selected minimum. Did root work for you? Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, if you get root to work, that's brilliant. I didn't. I wonder why I didn't. Uh, min, min also works. So if you want to know where that 
bounced bit is, and, and that's a, often a crucial point in questions, then G solve, I didn't think root would do it, apparently root does, at all minimum. You know, this is not the hardest sum in the world to do, but if you're not sure and you want a bit of reassurance, then uh, that, will, uh, that, will, that will tell you. So, uh, have a go at, um, I have to wipe my board off, have a go at sketching um, these functions. So this is from, for those at home, this is from page 26, question four. Have a go at sketching a couple of those, and then see if you can use your calculator to check, all right? Now, the first few are all in the modulus sign, but the last two have got a minus outside the modulus sign. It might be worth reflecting on what effect that's going to have before checking it, okay? So let me give you two or three minutes just to try those, sketching those, and I'll leave you to decide to what extent you do this in your notes or on the whiteboard. Um, so for, for 7 minus x, I can't cope with that, so I always rewrite it. And, and this is a trick which makes so many things, not just modulus questions, but so many things much easier. If you rewrite it as minus x plus 7, then it's obviously something that goes through 7 with a gradient of minus 1. So it's going to look like that. And, and that point is 7. So when you get that, rewrite it like that. Minus x plus 7. And, and obviously the same is true with uh, 6 minus 4x. Do you want to just finish off the one you're doing? And then we'll move on. So with, um, with g... The modulus of x looks like this. The y equals x line is, is that diagonal line, so the modulus of that just bounces at the origin. So multiplying everything by minus 1 just makes all those positive y values negative. So that's why that graph, g, looks like that. So although the modulus sign can never be negative, outside of that you can get things which could potentially turn it negative. So... So what? So what? Um, well, I have I've good news and bad news. Um, the, the good news is that um, answers involving modulus are generally fairly straightforward to answer, so it's, it, they're not complicated. The bad news is they rarely involve, or they rarely in the question, mention anything to do with graphs. Okay? So when you encounter a question using modulus, it will almost certainly be in the context of an equation that uses somewhere in it those bars. So we're going to look at how we can use graphs to solve equations that use the modulus function. And, and so my first example would be a question that would say something like this. So no mention of a graph, no mention of a graph at all, but the fact that you've got that modulus function there in that question, I'm hoping that you'll think, right, I'm going to solve this with a graph. Now there are algebraic ways to solve this, but I think the graphs are so much easier. I have to say, we're starting very, very easy at this point. You'll see in a minute when we solve this that this is a really easy one to solve. We do need to wind up for some more complicated ones. So you might at the moment say, there is no point using a graph to solve this. It's obvious how you solve it. Stick with the graphical approach because it's, it's essential. So I'm going to do what we often do with simultaneous equations. I'm going to solve this by sketching y equals that and y equals that. So on a set of axes, on one set of axes, see if you can sketch 
that. So that's a modulus function that we've... Uh, and also, can you sketch me that line? What does the y equals 5 look like, line look like? See if you can sketch both of those on a single set of axes, okay? The modulus of this and that. So this isn't the modulus function, although it's always going to be positive. And again, work out that key x-axis intersection. strongly encourage you not to try and do too much in your head. So start off by drawing the y equals 2x minus 1 line, then bounce it. Apologies for my axes not being to scale. So um, I'm hoping you've got something like that. So the uh, modulus of 2x minus 1 looks like this, bouncing here at a half. And the y equals 5 line is just a horizontal line that joins up every coordinate where the second number would be 5. So 0, 5, 1, 5, 2, 5, 3, 5. A and hopefully you realise, therefore, that the solutions to my original equation are where the two graphs intersect. So the solutions to my original equation are found where the two lines intersect. And this happens twice. We've got an intersection here. I'm going to call that intersection A. And we've got an intersection here. I'm going to call that intersection B. And this is where that thing about describing the two branches of the modulus graph come in. Because this part of the graph, if you remember, is just the normal y equals 2x minus 1 line. But the bounced part of the graph crosses at 1, not minus 1, and has a negative gradient that's the same steepness as the other one. So this bit is y equals minus 2x plus 1. So my two branches of my bounced modulus curve I can describe them with separate equations. So, intersection A is where this crosses this. So it's just where 2x minus 1 equals 5. So it's where y equals 2x minus 1 crosses y equals 5. So that gives me my first intersection. And remember, we are in the original question, no mention of graphs, no y values at all. So I'm only interested in x values. Intersection B is where the bounced part of the curve crosses the y equals 5 line. So it's where minus 2x plus 1 equals 5. See if you can find those two x values for me. Oh, 
So on this side, I added 2x and took away 5. X is minus 2. Well, that makes sense from the graph. That looks about right. And x is 3. Yeah, that makes sense from the graph. So those are my two solutions to the original equation. Now, you, you might be saying at this point, well, I, now you've shown me that, I don't need the graph. It's always just going to be the positive version of the graph equals 5 and the negative version of the graph equals 5. Well, OK, yeah, you're right. With simple equations like this, that will be true. We get more complicated. So I think it's still worth doing the graphs at this point because we actually end up doing far more complicated ones where, where this is algebra or maybe even another modulus function. So, you know, we're starting nice and straightforward. But I still think the graph is useful so I can check my answers are reasonable. You know, so it was obvious that A was going to be positive and B was going to be negative. If I made a mistake and got two positive answers, then hopefully I'd go back and check. And, and of course, you can use your calculator to check this. So you can sketch that and that on the same set of axes, G solve intersection, it will confirm the answers. So this is the first place that we are likely to come across the modulus function. Not a question that says sketch the graph of, but a question that makes no mention of graphs and just asks us to solve an equation. And we are doing that through the medium of graphs. And just for today, humour me and stick with the graphs. I, I know, you know, you could say, well, it's really obvious we don't need the graphs, but I'm, I'm saying just humour me just for now. Uh, so let me get you to do... So for those of you at home, this is the same page, page 24, 26, uh, 26, and this is question 6. And um, I suggest you go for quality, not quantity, so I could share the answers, but why not use your calculator to check the answers? Um, the only thing I will say is when you come to B, I'm going to rewrite B as a half of x minus 5 over 2. So, so that's, when I come to sketch y equals that, that's what I'm going to sketch. And, and I fully accept the argument that th these are really easy, you don't need the graph, but let's practice drawing the graphs at the same time so that when we come to the more complicated ones tomorrow, we're in a good position. Um, w with B, I found it much easier to sketch it looking at it like that. Um, it was when it equals 1, which is below that point there. I mean, it, it doesn't really affect the working at all, but I think it's good to get the graph correct. So. I've called that intersection A, that's when that equals 1. Intersection B is when the negative version of that graph equals 1. First thing I'm going to do in both cases is to double everything. Makes it all much easier. Oh, sorry. And that's where those two solutions came from. Right, so we'll leave that there, and this gets a little bit trickier tomorrow.